rear, the Just queen, the max sensor, and then... Why is there a super out here? I have both co-owners here at Long Roof Racing, okay. and we're going to talk about, you know, stuff around the shop we're working on, and uh, their thoughts on the automotive industry. Mm. So today, we're going to ask, what is the most common thing you guys see as shop owners slash techs? Super specific? Sure. Blown on motors. Blown on motors? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Especially around here, people driving through water, hydro locking things, and I mean, just. I've seen a lot of AC stuff too. Lots, lots of rod now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, AC work is up there for sure, especially being in South Carolina. Plus, Subarus, they don't use very good O rings for the AC, so there's that. Yeah, whoever designed those O rings was like on vacation that day. I've also noticed that, like today, that one customer came in. And the cabin air filter was dirty. Ooh, yeah, I feel a full My leaves. cake up with leaves completely well, to the top. The pollen helps that here too. So, like also we talked about earlier with uh, shop cars versus customer cars, and uh, why you shouldn't race a shop car's car. Mm, that's a good one. What would you do, Darren? If someone said, I want to race you for money, and you have your the W, you do some silly stuff. I will literally shut loose cut off and pull the waste paper. <laughs> it, it's, it's so easy though, because yeah, like, if we kill the motor, what are we going to do? We're going to bring it back to the shop. We're going to take a bunch of used parts from other yeah. scattered motors that we've had. Yeah. We're going to blueprint it. We're going to slap it together, and it's going to run again. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about honing. We can do cutter on valves. We can do whatever we need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Plus, so it cuts yeah. the cost and price down compared to a customer that would spend, mm -hmm, you right. know, five to eight thousand dollars on mm -hmm. engine work. Yep. Yeah. Customer has to have. Well, I mean, there's some people that have enough money that don't have to have a reserve, like a mental reserve. There. Mm -hmm. They don't care if they scatter their stuff. Well, like you, when we took your car to Elijah's, and you're mm -hmm. like, send it. You oh, literally yeah. said go until it doesn't go. <laughs> yeah, I think Elijah was more scared to shoot my car <laughs> than I was. Yeah. But also, I think for entry level, back to uh, car engines, since that's primarily what uh, we do at LOR, um, what's a good entryway for somebody off the street that wants to just say like 350 to 400 will kind of price out uh, generally for something like that? We'll go from fully stock WRX to a 400 horsepower daily driver. EJ based or FA? Uh, we'll do EJ. It's gotta be EJ. Yeah. FA stuff. FA is a little out of some people's yeah. price ranges. It can, it, it can be reliable. 400 horsepower. It's just Very chain true. motors are so expensive. The labor, the they're just hard to be reliable. They have skinnier rod bearings. Everything about them, they're just weak motors. So if I wanted a Subaru and I wanted it to be 350 to 400 horsepower, I would source a factory turbo manual um, GD chassis, so 02 mm -hmm. to what? 07. 07? Yeah. And then I would immediately go to fuel pump first, 1050 injectors, um, a downpipe would be helpful. And obviously you have to get a turbo, so. BCP X500. BCP is rowdy. That's the daddy turbo for stock heads. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase that. Unported stock cammed heads. And you can do valves, valve springs. Yeah. But keeping okay. the ports all the same. So for most of the parts, you would want to get like name brand stuff, not stuff like, that you would buy. Yeah. From like, you know, an unsourced website. Yeah, not eBay. Yeah. You know, for reliability, you have to go with companies that have done like the engineering. Um, like, I mean, you can go on eBay and spend 150 bucks on a 20G, and it'll say yeah. it's rated 420 horsepower or whatever, and they're mm -hmm. just hammered trash. They're all Chinese parts. Not that some stuff can't be good, and will it work? Yes, it might work, but is it going to be reliable? That's completely different. I mean, like with the BCP turbos, even if you don't get a ball bearing one, you get a journal bearing one. Those things have been engineered to oh, be like yeah. ridiculous. They're supposed to be pushed out of their efficiency range and stuff. Um, so they just tend to last so much longer. And if a turbo stays together, your engine lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Invoices, when we send customers estimates, when they see the price, 
they like kind of back away because they don't realize how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. But when you pay for a premium product, that's kind of like you have to pay to play when you want mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I think it's something that a lot of people don't understand, and it's it's not anything bad. It's just a lack of knowledge. But to you can make four hundred horsepower, but to make four hundred horsepower reliably and be able to treat it as if it was in fully intended to make four hundred horsepower yeah. all the time, yeah. that is a complete different animal. Because okay, we could take a stock EJ two fifty seven long block, make four hundred horsepower, but take that out on a road course, do twenty hot laps, it will, melt it down. will explode. Yeah. So 400 horsepower, sustaining 400 horsepower is way different than just making it. Mm -hmm. So like if I wanted a good recipe for a 400 horsepower reliable daily driver, I'd do like our stage two short block, which is, you know, essentially upgraded pistons, rods, oil porting, bearings, fully blueprinted. Yeah. Um, like I said, a stage two head, so pocket ported, bowl blended, just good valves, good valve springs, stock cams, um, air repeat head studs, and but just good oil control, a good oil pan. And a good radiator. Yep. Oh, um, always. Yeah. Stock totally. radiators. That's stock. a whole other thing people yeah. don't really look into. They only look at, oh, I want a turbo, I want bigger injectors, but they disregard the whole cooling mm -hmm. and oil capacity yeah. and oil cooling to some extent on certain cars. Yeah. Oil pans is like number one upgrade on Super. I don't care if it's a stock motor. I would almost argue to say, that an oil pan, baffle, and pickup tube is more important on a stock EJ than even a built one. Hmm. The main reason is because they already suffer from windage so bad. Hmm. Like the rods are you know, kind of heavy, stuff isn't balanced very well, the clearances aren't set up really well, so when you have all this unwanted windage in the hmm. rotating assembly, it's very, very bad. So you get like a, it, at a minimum, just a good killer B like windage tray to scrape, you know, to yeah. control the windage off the crank is, that's huge. And then you have people that's on the other side that's like do all the cooling stuff, but then they're scared to do like power adders, adders like turbos mm -hmm. and uh, fueling because they're not really mm -hmm. knowledgeable about that. Um, especially for uh, like BRZs, like NA cars. So they want to do everything besides make that's a hard the actual one. power. The, the NA cars to turbos is yeah. hard. Yeah. Mainly because like the, you know, the chain motor NA cars, all the BRZs, mm -hmm. they're higher compression. So a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I seen them on a forum, they made 300 horsepower. And it's, yeah, I'm like, okay. Well, for one, how are they treating the car? Um, because yeah, can you make 300 horsepower just to pull up and down the street? That's fine. But if you want a car that you can treat as a yeah. car as a whole and use it, in a cars as turbo cars are hard, yeah. hard, hard. And yeah, I've seen even those estimates are like prices are even higher because mm -hmm. you have to do more, more modifications and yeah. stuff. You gotta add stuff that's not there. Yeah. Uh, a horsepower number doesn't matter to me if I can't use it all the time. Yeah. I want to be able to use the car all the time. Yeah. Well, like your car is like 340, 360 horsepower. Yeah. And it slays most things because it is a huge power band. It's very usable. The car launches perfectly. Like, it's just yeah. very usable 340 horsepower. Uh, can we also put in the fact we have an awesome tuner? Like, yeah, he, that's like a cheat code. Well, that's also <laughs> re readily available to us. Yeah. yeah. As some people have to wait, you know, yeah. to be on the schedule. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, but really familiar with Subarus because we get a lot of people be like, hey, it's my first Subaru. I don't want to build an engine. But it's mm -hmm. also like, well, you have to pay for somebody experienced to do it properly. Mm -hmm. I think something else I've noticed is a lot of customers will hit us up and they don't, I don't think some people know how like a shop works. Like not just us, just the mm -hmm. shop in general because they'll they'll hit us up and they think that they have to like buy their own parts and just like bring them here yeah. and have us like do it. And I'm like, no, we we facilitate the whole thing. Yeah. Like the, the best way to get the best result and sometimes it will actually save you like loads of money is just have us do the whole thing. Tell us your goal. And we will tell you what yeah, our so years and years of experience. That's less of a headache for the customer mm -hmm. since yeah. they don't have to source through different websites. Yeah. Like we all go through like a handful, you know, distributors. And also, I think you know the one-stop shop that we're trying to do is makes it more convenient. Mm -hmm. and bring us a car. Yeah, give us a goal and a mindset that you have. What do you want to do with it? And we'll build you what you need. Mm -hmm. We're not like, you know like a corporation, like a, a Mavis tire or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, yeah. we take our time to make sure you get the right 
parts you need instead of be like, all right, let's just throw on this lift kit. Yeah. <laughs> make sure it goes faster or like something stupid that would just make you spend more money. Yeah. Yeah. We. I think we find more joy in just building cool cars, and we just have to get paid for our time. Like yeah, it, to me, to <laughs> yeah, that's to make it enjoyable that's to get paid yeah. for your service. Yeah. But yeah. even with you know, we're a small shop, so we don't have like a huge facility and ten employees. So it does take time for us yeah. to you know have ten different cars and projects we're working on. Yeah. So that's something also people should consider with going with you know a small local shop that does mm. you know the work right the first time. Mm -hmm. okay. As People get antsy. I definitely say we're more personal, but being that we are so small, we have to bounce around on different projects a lot because at the end of the day, we have to get all the work done. So yeah, yeah and we refuse to not do it our yeah. way. Like, yeah. could we could we rush stuff? I can tell you right now, if we cut our quality in half, we could probably knock out yeah. most of the yeah, stuff we have here. Left wiring loose and then oh, put yeah. anything. We can even even stuff like we have a customer that tells us once you get this car running again, it's literally just going to get parked and it's just going to sit. We're still cleaning bolts on the wire wheel. We're still like doing our nitpicky stuff because we just I don't know any other way to work on cars yeah. other than to just do it right. There's okay. a level of quality that we have and we refuse to do anything else. Yeah. So which sucks for time sometimes, but. but Work. At the end of the day, we're just we're gonna build the quality of stuff that we do, and it's not. Gonna Which is good for like most people that don't know the shop. Well, like look at Landon. Landon was one of our first customers to fully just trust us with mm -hmm. everything, and look at the awesome car he got. Yeah, this thing is incredible. It is, and it's all yeah. us. It's our custom front mount kit. It's our full long block package. Like everything on that was us. Yeah, and the car is so well rounded. Yeah. Custom he, fabrication, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And, tuning, everything. and he wants to come back and do more crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants to do twin turbo now. <laughs> oh boy. I'm excited for that one. That'll be... He you're going to you're gonna have a welding helmet mark on your head for a while. <laughs> yeah. sure. He needs to stay off social media. We're going to need a different, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna need a different front mount for sure. Well, yeah. John Michael's car, his car, he brought it here and from another shop and mm -hmm. he still here. Mm -hmm. He's just like, let just tell me what to do yeah. to meet this goal, and we did it. Yeah. And it, it works perfect. It made 500 horsepower on Dom 1.5 XTR. I did not think it was going to make 500 horsepower. Yeah. On our, I mean, it's a fairly simple 2 liter too. Yeah. So. And then we have your W that most people don't know about, but want to see more videos of. Oh, uh, we'll and just a little sun. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring some videos up. We might have to involve chains and the car not moving, but yeah. being in gear. That's a coming soon title. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the, I used, mean, the used parts WRX. Yeah. The cheapest fast car ever. The cheapest fast car ever. That, yeah. that car is just the perfect storm. The most bang for your buck. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think there is a, a, a cheap way to make power though. Like you were yeah. saying, just like a, a GD chassis. Look at what we've done with your car. If you yeah. buy just a solid 0204 to 4 WRX, you throw some good reliability mods on it, a fairly decently sized turbo, and you just deal with it being a little laggy. I mean, you can make 350, 400 horsepower pretty reliably. Yeah. And well, I also have it's to, not that expensive. I have to include the fact of what fuel we're using. Mm -hmm. We're using E85, so it's a little easier. That but keeps still, it alive. Still. still an impressive monument of that car. Especially sure. with, you know, the GDs from the 0205, you can use the Carberry yep. from, so it's a little bit easier to tune than, you know, games, other yeah. standalones and cheaper. But, uh... But you still are limited yeah. to, like, 550-ish, though, on Carberry. Yeah, Which just, is still enough for most people, because some yeah, people sure. honestly have not sit in a car more than 400 horsepower. Yeah. Especially in a Subaru chassis. I think people underestimate a 450 to 500 horsepower Subaru. Yes. Yeah. Like I've been in 400, 500 horsepower like Corvettes and stuff. And then it's a different beast. I don't know why Subaru just makes different power. It feels different. It's not that the cars are faster than everything. It's just a 500 horsepower Subaru is a silly car. And it's all a drive. So yeah. it's like, you just cooking double up. silly. Well, not all of <laughs> But most of the time, for people that uh, that are new and are getting into the Subaru com community, they uh, don't know where to start. So the best place, I think, 
What do you guys think should they start at for something like when it comes to modification? Always maintenance first. Learn how to check your oil. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot. You gotta make sure the vitals are good first. Always, yeah. cause like before we do any tuning, we're gonna have to know that it has good spark plugs in it. If yeah. we can't ask you what spark plugs it has and it has IDKs in it. <laughs> that was one time. <laughs> you gotta make a list like top, let's say three, of like before you wanna get your car tuned, what are the top three things you wanna do? Oil change, spark plugs, make sure your exhaust is good, fuel pump. If we don't, if you don't do one, then I'm gonna do one. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna run out of fuel immediately, yeah. so. Maybe a smoke test. Yeah. Like yeah. a leak down test or something. Yeah. Like yeah. It's always good to know the health of the motor. You know, we like to cut up an oil filter. Yeah. Oil filter's 11 bucks. Wow. That's a, a good sense of security before mm -hmm. putting your car on the dyno because if the filter's full of metal, then I mean, you ain't even in the realm of ready to tune the car yet. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, easy enough when we do oil changes here, we analyze okay. the filter and do everything. And yeah. if it's something wrong, we don't even want to put it on the dyno. Like it has metal in it. And if you're doing plugs or we're doing plugs, we are going to do a compression test regardless because the plugs are out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing your own plugs, just go the Riley's or some order. A, well, you can rent a compression tester and mm -hmm. just do it yourself. So yeah, it's, it's easy. never easier than right there. <laughs> yeah. You don't even need a friend, honestly. You can just hook it up, crank it, check it, check here. the gauge and everything. Yeah. But I guess that leads into our next topic for our next video. I guess I guess tuning. So. We have our own in-house tuner yeah. that we uh, that we have here at Redemption Tuning and Racing, and uh, hopefully we can maybe have him on a call for like a little bit and pick his brain. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Oh, actually, he might be here in two weeks to tune a bunch of cars, so maybe so, we can just put him in a video. Yeah, we can get get some good juicy notes for the people that want to watch more of this. But uh, I guess for next time, we'll just leave it there. Happy racing.